I wanted to start out by introducing myself personally. I am Christina. I've created this space called The Reclaimed Heirloom and what I want to do is share with you all my painting techniques, things that I've learned, trials and errors, stepping out of the box a little bit and give you as much detail in being able to create your own finishes at home with any pieces that you may currently have or pieces that you find and you just want to upcycle and do something different with your decor and you don't have to spend a lot of money to do it. So for this piece, as you can see, I've already done an aerial and I'm five foot eight, so she's definitely a good six feet. Um, I'm gonna change the camera direction around as we go so you can get nice up close and personal to this particular technique I wanna show you today. So, starting off, the colors I have chosen Cocoa, Scandinavian Pink, I think where's the Scandinavian Pink, love this pink. This is a really old, old pink. It's got kind of a muted feel to it and I figured with some cocoa it makes a really nice um, mesh together. For some highlights and some lowlights, we're going to use some Country Grey, which is kind of a muted cream with a bit of linen to it. It's, as I say, it's, it's kind of a real muted, muddy kind of cream color. So I just trying to describe the colors a little bit to you guys because if you have other chalk paint products, you're just trying to find what you may already have that would closely relate to the colors that I'm using here. So these are all Annie Salone products, but I'm also using Grapi for some more low lights. For this piece, I have cleaned it with my, this is what I like to use. It's a, uh, it's non, it's not heavily toxic. I always do this stuff in my garage but I find it works really, really well. A bottle this size lasts me for at least a dozen to two dozen pieces of furniture, so it's, and it's very inexpensive. I did, for safekeeping, throw some shellac. This is like a clear spray shellac, so we don't have any bleed through. This is really old, very worn down. Even taking off with the cleaner, sometimes the shellac makes, especially when you're blending colors. If you're gonna paint this a solid color, you don't really need to do this. Chalk paint is not something you need to prime, but when you're doing decorative finishes and you're gonna be using water or multiple colors and you're moving them around, sometimes bleed through will come through a little bit. So just to avoid that altogether, just grab yourself some spray shellac. This is the bull's eye. It, again, it's relatively inexpensive, a little goes a long way. A piece this size, I did do it twice, a piece this size is going to take you a good quarter of a can, well, yeah, about a quarter of a can. So, what I'm going to show, what I want to show you for a really fun technique today is meshing. So I have this little tool, I've never done this before, so bear with me but I think it's actually gonna be kind of cool. So this is really soft and it's very fluffy. And what I wanted to do, and I'm kind of thinking it from a physics level, is I wanna take this and I want to mesh my colors as I'm going. So we're gonna be dabbing with this and I'm gonna have, um, in the description box below, I'm going to have all the tools that I use for this project. So if you need to refer to it or if you wanted to buy it on Amazon, it's right there. We're going to mesh today. So it's kind of a form of blending. It's not stippling, you're meshing. So because of the physics of this being light and fluffy, what we wanted to do is pick the paint, push it together, pick up the paint, push it together. And what it's going to do is it's going to help blend. And again, I really want to create this really old, vintage, old world look with the colors we've chosen and for a piece of this style. So I've gone ahead and I've taped up my mirror just with some painter's tape. 
and we're all ready to go and I'm going to talk you through anything that I'm doing and any steps that I may or may change my mind with just so you can follow along and let's see how this turns out. So the first thing I've done is I've gone ahead and kind of made a little custom uh, formulation here with my macaroni salad bin. I recycle these so I can mix the paint and put a lid on it. So if you want to do another project with any of your leftover paint, you're good to go. So this is Scandi Pink with cocoa. And I put a little tiny bit of the country gray in here. And I've gotten this kind of dusty rose color. I really like this. I actually did a project very similar to this. Um, it's in the tutorials if you wanted to go and take a look at that at any point. It's an adorable little three drawer chest of uh, dresser and um, I'm doing actually very similar. I think I'm actually doing all the same colors as I did with that one. But um, because of the style and technique that we're going to do, where the variances of the colors are going to go, this is still going to look a little bit different. But if you wanted a comparison, and yeah, just if you kind of like the muted pink colors, that's what I've done here. So I'm going to actually start my base with this. And I'm, this isn't actually very much, but believe it or not, chalk, good chalk paint's going to go a long way. And this is where the shellac helps too, because it's not going to smear so much. It actually has something to grab into. So we're going to go ahead and slap that on. It's not going to look too pretty until we're ready to start meshing with that tool that I was showing you. So until we start actually blending the paint, bear with its ugliness, but it does get beautiful, I promise. taken the hardware off and I'm going to figure out later what we're going to do but I'm going to clean them and see if we'll just preserve its original metal look or we'll add some gilding wax. We'll see how it goes as we continue on. I generally like to lay out where I'd like to blend my colors. So again, starting as a base color, I'm just going to add my graphite as well as my cocoa and mesh into the pink. Again, I'm just slapping on the colors where I think it's going to blend best. So for the exact same pattern that I did at the top, um, I'm doing it at the bottom. So I'm starting with the graphite, moving to cocoa, and then bringing it up to our Scandinavian pink mix. Again, this is just the base coat, nothing fancy. You just want to get your paint on there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you a quick demo here of what this mesh blending. That's what it looks like. This mesh blending. So we only have one coat and we should have two coats as a base but for one coat I just want to give you a quick idea and I'm going to mash some of this Scandi pink mix that I already made with a little bit of country, country gray here. So let's see how this works. water bottle on hand just to keep it moist I'm 
I'm using a separate brush. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the color down on that. Put some here, just in random, no particular order. but I'm referring to it as meshing. So it does create a little bit of stippling, but that's okay. The paint is moist, so it's gonna level down a little bit. Um, when you're done with your meshing, if you want a smoother finish, you can always take 220 grit or finer and just give your finish a little sanding and that will help smooth it out. I love texture, so the more the merrier, but if you like it a little bit more smoothed out, that's your thing, especially if you're doing something like this technique on a tabletop and you want that nice smooth finish. Again, just really fine sandpaper, 220 or more, and uh, you're good to go. So yeah, you can do as much or as little as you want. So just as a quick experiment, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of graphite so you can actually see that little bit of definition. So I'm just putting a little bit of graphite, so I just kinda of want some at the sides here. No particular order. It's all just gonna get meshed in anyway. This seems to handle the corners quite well for this little gadget piece that I call a mesher. Quite happy with that. And it's, you're literally just smashing these colors till you like it. If your color's somewhere you don't like it, just put the other color where you do want it. So again, with a method like this, you actually have a lot, a lot of control. I love it. So I'm just gonna keep going. At least you have a pretty good spy's eye of what's going on here. Um, I do recommend for each color that you're going to do is just give this a little fine alteration because you're going to keep mashing colors. The other really good idea, um, I have to move my camera to show you, is you can have a t-shirt, an old t-shirt or an old cloth. Um, you could even use, uh, let's say, two layers of some paper towel and give this an offload of your paint, kind of wiping it clean again. It's obviously still going to have paint on it, but you're offloading excess paint as you keep going and you're creating the color fashion and design that you want. So just letting you know. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a second coat on here and let that dry. So it's nice and solid, ready to go. And then we're just gonna go mesh happy. And let's see how this is all gonna turn out. 
With these, you can use any brushes. I'm just using these palm chippy brushes. You can use any brush you want. This doesn't have a particular um, paint finish because we're doing the meshing. As I say, just remember the tip that if you really want that smoother effect, sand in between your coats. Just give it a light sand, smooth it down. If you want lots of texture, I like lots of texture, especially because we're gonna go ahead and we are going to use some dark and black wax after we clear wax this. And when you have lots of texture in the paint, the wax has something to sit in and this is gonna give it that really refined aged finish. So just so you can kind of know as you're going, if you are looking for that, it is better to have the texture but if you don't want to wax other than just clear wax seal it um, and you're not interested to put an antique um, aged effect to it on top, then go with your sanded in between your coats. And if you are, the more texture the better. So just get the paint on there. It's not about what you're using or how you're applying the paint. I just brush it randomly. This creates high and low points to my paint and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to throw in a little added extra just to make this meshing go a little bit quicker and it might be a little bit more um, settling as we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply this water base clear glaze. I'm kind of going on a whim. I've never done it like this, but I'm going to see if it works. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to apply clear glaze with a chippy brush going to apply it straight on there. I'm not going to make any mixes like I've done in the past. I'm just going to apply it on there. Then I'm going to put my paints on. Then I'm going to go and use this. Let's see what happens. It looks white, but it's clear. It's going to dry clear. So I'm going to go ahead, wipe that in. This is fully dry. We have two coats on here. decided to go with the glaze is because I don't want to keep spraying with water. I find that frustrating sometimes. So by using the glaze, it kind of holds everything in place because this is a working medium that you can use with paints. And this is a, I think I already said it though, is a water-based glaze. So water-based glaze works with any water paint. So, and that's what chalk paint is, is water base. So, you can always add extender. There we go. You can always add this extender to your clear glaze so you have more working time. But I'm gonna do small sections. I feel like I'm gonna have enough time to go ahead and apply my paint, do the meshing with my tool, and we should be okay. But I just wanted to throw that out just in case if you guys want a little bit more time as you're working, depending on your project. And yeah, sometimes people just like a little more time. Random, some cocoa. Some of my Scandi pink. Just slapping it on there because we're gonna be meshing it together anyway. graphite Corner as I'm because these have a little 
ledge. They have a little ripple here. A wood detail. It's so easy. Why didn't I think of this before? I have a t-shirt just plain on the floor and then I wipe this across just to take off excess paint so you're unloading so you're not gathering a bunch and mashing it and it just becomes a big blob so it just allows for a little more control as you're doing this meshing. I'm like totally in love. Why didn't I think of this before? This is awesome. You can create all kinds of highlights and lowlights. You can mash whatever colors you want and it just, it creates a proper form and it's unified and the transitions of colors, yummy. Yummy. Wow. Okay. I'm going to bring the camera back a little bit and I'm going to show you sections as I'm going just to prove that this works and it's super awesome. So, hope you guys try this. I'm loving this little guy. I got to look for other kind of fun tools that we can use in the future to make our blending, especially for a project this size. Can you imagine just standing here and blending and blending and blending and blending? That's sometimes where you're kind of like, I don't know about that. But if we can do it this way, I can have this project done today and dried. We're throw on some wax because I think I mentioned in case I didn't I want to clear wax seal this and we're going to use a little bit of the dark and black wax uh, the Annie Sloan and yeah ooh, I'm super excited right now yeah okay Again. I'm overlapping the glaze where it ended so I'm kind of coming back up a little bit so that way you don't have anything kind of not transitioned in correctly so I don't want any kind of defined line of where we glazed and meshed and yeah so it's just being rhythmic with stopping and starting. Again, no particular pattern where I'm putting the paint. I just really want to create some highlights and lowlights to the main pink mix that we have. And most of all, you just really want to have some fun. There, if for any reason you don't like something, let it dry, go ahead and put the clear glaze on again and add some more paint and redirect where you'd like your colors. So again, lots of control. So here I'm just using the chippy brush. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of a wood frame on the main panel. So I'm just pushing that paint to get right into the tiny little crevices.
really nice component about doing this, you can stand back or come back at a later time and change your mind. So the control factor you do have is you can just put the glaze back on with your paint colors and go around and redo it. So if you want it a little bit lighter or darker, whatever your prerogative is, you're good to go. So that's pretty awesome. And it's so less messy than water. So this video is definitely a lot longer than any of my other videos and the main reason for that is A, it's a big project and B, this is a new technique for me and I'm super excited to share this with you as well as I really want you to be successful with this whole technique. So I wanted to actually put in uh, a little extra footage and detail to this so that way you can have some good clear guidelines to go by with the meshing technique. I've had many requests on how I like to apply my waxes, so I decided to separate this tutorial and make a separate tutorial focused on how to apply clear, dark, and black wax, and I've also included gilding wax. So definitely, if you get a chance, uh, I highly recommend to watch part two of this tutorial. so happy with these results and what I'm just ecstatic about is I completed this entire armoire in one afternoon and it looks like this so wish I had thought of this a little earlier <laughs> washes up really nice can't go wrong when you're dealing with water base products so even adding in the glaze easy wash up super easy you don't have to use glaze if you don't want to. Um, I did do a small demo right at the beginning when we got started just with the chalk paint and the meshing seemed to work just fine. But I did find that the glaze seemed a little bit more, I can't even describe it. It just, it seemed to paddle through um, a little bit easier, but that was just my experience. But I. It wasn't difficult to do it just with the chalk paint as well. So again, if you don't want to use glaze, I did use water-based clear glaze from General Finishes if you wanted to give that a try with this technique as well. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to clear wax. I am going to show this on camera um, as well as I'm going to add a little bit of dark wax and a little bit of gilding wax. And as I go, I'm gonna fill you in on the remainder of this, as well as don't forget to click, like, and subscribe. Give a thumbs up um, if you like this video. Um, I can't wait to show you guys. I recently picked up a few more tools that I can't wait to show you, and I'm gonna show you how to use the comb. 
So I'm going to throw that in the next few tutorials. So definitely, if you subscribe, you're not going to miss any of the upcoming fun ideas that we're going to throw on here. So let me go ahead and get started. And I'm going to fill you in on the details as we continue and stay to the end so you can see this all staged up and how beautiful she's going to look when we have a bit of, bit better of a dressing background other than this room. Thanks for watching.